Uh, we've been telling you about pro Hamas protesters going death to America. But according to the President of the United States, Donald Trump is the single biggest threat. And many on the left say the same thing who are in the media. Listen. Trump saying he's going to be a dictator for a day, which is not going to be for a day if it happens, no. could be for the rest of our lifetimes. He will punish everybody that didn't vote for him. Let me tell y'all how I know this. I know it because I know what mental illness looks like. He wants to take away the freedoms of the American people. He wants a rule of one, not a rule of dem uh, by democracy. All right. Uh, well, Eric Trump, I believe, disagrees, according to his pre-interview. Eric, your reaction to that, that was just a small sample of the main attack line against uh, your dad. I'm a son who has watched my father go through to hell, literally, for the last eight years. I've seen them pull him off of ballots in places like Maine and Colorado. I've seen them make up phony dossiers about my father. I've seen them try and impeach him twice. I've seen the Biden administration literally sick every single DA and every single AG in the country against my father to try and take out his wealth, to try and put him in jail. This is a man who's literally, this is an administration who's let close to 15 million illegals into this country, has flown 320,000 illegal immigrants into the United States to try and mess with the U.S. Census, which we all know is a game that they're playing right now. They've let wars break out all over the globe. And he's saying that, that Donald Trump is, is the threat to U.S. democracy. I mean, Brian, we've lost our standing in the world. We have zero respect anymore from anyone. We, we're not being looked at as, as the true superpower anymore. We're, we're losing our U.S. currency right now. We're losing everything under Biden. We lost Afghanistan in the most embarrassing fashion ever. Our military is not as prepared as it was. I mean, look at the litany of things that are happening in this country right now. And, and Donald Trump, who had none of these problems, is the threat to democracy. It's a joke. I actually think in this interview with uh, Univision, that was a, that was seemed like this seemed to be a setup question, uh, obviously. And the comedy made to Sean Hannity. He said, will you be a dictator? He said, yeah, one day. To, I'm going to seal the border, and then I'm going to go back. And now they use that and say on day one he's going to be a dictator, including the president of the United States. So fundraising is going to be a big objective. And over yes. the weekend, you guys set a record with $50 million, uh, yeah. brought in at Mar-a-Lago. A big fundraiser uh, is in Atlanta. Yeah. Again, so the minimum, I think, is eight, you know, 800 uh, plus thousand yeah. but yet the Biden administration has outraised you two to one can your wife and your dad close the gap yeah well not anymore I mean in the last four weeks since my father since my wife obviously took over the RNC they've they've raised 130 million dollars my father has two fundraisers today that are uh, unbelievable they'll raise 15 million dollars today they've never seen fundraising numbers like this in the history of the Republican Party and it's because people believe in Donald Trump they've seen the, the absolute train wreck that is Joe Biden they know what's happening to this country. The, the Biden narrative is no longer working. Um, you know, the mainstream media, they, they can no longer kind of sugarcoat how bad and how disastrous he's been for this entire nation. And people are coming out in record numbers to support him. I mean, my father did unbelievable things. We had the best economy we've ever had. We had the best military. We had peace on earth. We had no wars. We had peace in the Middle East. I mean, we had the biggest tax cuts in history. We, you know, we did so many great things, and, and, and you look at it, in, in a three-year period of time, our country has, has gone to hell, and, and people want old America back. They want the country that they were proud of back. They want a cheerleader back in the Oval Office, and I think that's why the, the funds are coming out in the way that they are. Not many people thought, as much as uh, your wife is great on camera, not many people thought she was going to do something with two little kids, go across the country and take over the RNC. Why was it necessary for her and Michael Watley to take it over? Yeah. Well, for, they've done a great job. Both of them have done a great job, and they're, they're great operatives. You have a but, four- and six-year-old at home, too, right? Brian, they had to restore trust in the RNC. The first thing that they did was they went in there, and they got rid of the vast majority of the RNC, and there were a lot of never-Trumpers in there, I hate to say it. And, you know, the second they did that, all of a sudden, this, the spigots got turned on, and, you know, there was confidence. The RNC and the campaign are working as one right now, and, and they've got one objective. There is no excess money in flowers. There's no silly expenses. Right. They have one objective, to get people out to the polls and right. to make sure that voter fraud does not happen in this country. And they will put every minute of every single day, they will use every single dime that they raise to make sure that Donald Trump is, is the next president of the United States and, and, and right. wins this upcoming election. And, and of course, uh, unlike last time, you're going to be for early voting if that's something you want to do. Uh, lastly, for the president of the United States, got a court case probably going to start yeah. your dad uh, next week. For six to eight weeks, he could be stuck in a New York yeah. courtroom. That's Monday through Thursday, it's eight hours, plan. ten hours a day. How, how do you overcome that? What's the plan to overcome it? It's yeah. not going to be a surprise. Now, every single time he walks into that courtroom, 
millions and millions of dollars flow in because the American people know exactly what, what's happening to him. And you have a judge who has a family member who literally profits off of these cases, who's making millions and millions of dollars His daughter. off of these cases, whose Twitter profile is literally my father behind bars. And, and that's, what Amer that, that's what New York has become. You know, and, and, and my father goes in and there's a recusal motion in there right now. Y you need to recuse yourself. You can't have these conflicts of interest. And it, Brian, you know, New York has become the legal system in New York, at least on that level, has become the laughing stock of this country. And, uh, and it has to get fixed. And you can't have judges who have family members who mm -hmm. literally fundraise off of, you know, people that are sitting in front of their fathers getting indicted and making millions of dollars for it while being the biggest political operatives and fundraising operatives in a state. It uh, cannot happen in the United States legal system. I believe the judge did donate to the Biden campaign in a small number, but he's not going to recuse himself. But as you look at this case in particular, um, the president's got a, uh, as a gag order on him, cannot really talk about it. Yeah. How debilitating is that? Well, think about it. They want to do that from day one. You know, Twitter banned him, Facebook banned him, Instagram banned him. Every judge puts a gag order on it. I mean, we do have a First Amendment in this country for a reason, but as it pertains to Donald Trump, for some reason it doesn't exist. As it pertains to everybody else, the First Amendment's unstoppable. But if it, if it comes to Donald Trump, he no longer has a freedom of speech according to these courts. And it's, um, he'll take this all the way to the Supreme Court. He'll take it as far as he needs. And he's got an amazing voice, and he will come in here, and he's going to win the cases. And, um, and Brian, he's going to win this presidency. Six, six, months you believe you're gonna, six months out, you believe you're going to win? I know we're going to win. I know we're going to win because I, I, I know where this country is. I, I, I can feel the sentiment of the country. Um, and people are not buying what's happening right now. Um, the mainstream media, they'll keep on peddling their nonsense, but Americans are upset. Right. This country is going down the tube. Um, and they miss right. the guy who did a great job for this nation, which was Donald Trump. And he's going to be back in office. I right. guarantee it. And I'd just be very curious to see if he wins again, uh, if you'll be joining him this time. Uh, and we'll see if you're the, the Trump that goes or the Trump that stays. Yeah. Great to see you, Eric. Thanks always so much, fantastic. Brian. Appreciate you. It's always great. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.